Hi folks, Dave here. So what is this thing I'm building? Well, it's one of my latest projects, and I thought I'd share it with you. First, the background. For years, I have used modified solar electric space heaters connected directly to solar panels out in my yard to heat my workshop and home. These heaters are simple, cheap, easy to work on, and quite robust. They can consume solar electric power directly, and they don't wear out batteries, charge controllers, and inverters. They have served me very well. Solar PV heaters even allowed me to stop running my complicated and expensive heat pumps during the winter time and instead just relying on the supplemental heat provided by the solar panels. In the summer, the same solar panels can pivot from running heaters to running air conditioners and doing any other tasks that I need done. Much is said about solar thermal heating and I'm not against it, but it doesn't have the flexibility that solar electric power has. At the end of the day, I'd rather use my available space to deploy more solar panels versus solar thermal equipment. <sighs> But from the beginning, I knew that these solar electric heaters had one big problem. They cannot regulate themselves to the solar panel's maximum power point voltage. Nichrome resistance wire is static, whereas solar panels are dynamic. Solar panels change their power and current output throughout the day, but they always like to run at the most efficient voltage, which is called the maximum power point. This is why we have MPPT charge controllers. But there is a simpler and lesser known method of utilizing the maximum power point of a solar panel array. Simply put, it's to recognize that as long as the voltage of the solar panel array is allowed to stay at or near the optimum voltage, it's enough to get most of the power. This could be called constant voltage tracking. A resistance heater is static and therefore when directly attached to solar panels, the voltage is unregulated and can swing all over the place. Simply put, you cannot get the maximum amount of solar electric heat from solar panels with just simple resistance heaters alone. You would need an MPPT DC converter circuit for that. Here's a great real world example of why electric resistance heaters just don't work very well under varying conditions. This is one of my earliest 50 volts DC PV to load solar electric space heater prototypes. It sees heavy use during the winter season. The heater is connected directly to several large solar panels out in my yard, through a circuit breaker, it has tip over protection, and so forth. As you can see, the voltage at this time in the morning is only about 4.96 volts, and the amount of current flowing is about 0.9 amps. Well, that's not anywhere near the maximum power voltage of these particular solar panels. In fact, it needs to be up over 50 volts DC. Now watch what happens if I connect a different 50 volts DC space heater to the solar panels at the same time of the morning. We now have a voltage of 19.2 volts DC into the heater and the current is about 1.10 amps. So the first heater was making 4.46 watts of heat, but the second heater under the same exact conditions, same exact solar panels, is making 21 watts of heat, approaching 5 times more. But still, the solar panels are not anywhere near the 50 volts DC needed. Why is this? It's simple. DC electric resistance heaters are ohmic, meaning that they have a significant impedance or resistance to current flow. And that impedance is static, meaning it does not really change, no matter how much current the solar panel can provide at the moment. So the solar panels cannot deliver enough current under these conditions to raise the voltage up to the optimum operating range of about 50 volts DC. <laughs> But that's where diode chains or diode strings come into the picture. A bunch of power diodes wired in series can act as a self-regulated solid state heating element with a specific voltage set by the user. Match that diode chain to your solar panel's maximum power point voltage and suddenly you have a solar electric heating element that acts very similar to an MPPT circuit. There's been quite a lot of scholarly work on this topic of diodes, but I had to see it for myself, so I built a number of prototypes including this solar electric cooker. And sure enough, the diode strings are capable of extracting nearly the maximum amount of electric heat, even in cloudy and suboptimal conditions. Instead of a resistance heating element, what if we place a string of diodes across the solar panels? Remember, diodes are not ohmic. They drop about a half a volt each. If you have enough of them, they could require 50 volts DC before they start dropping any voltage and passing any significant current. And as the solar panel develops more current, rather than pushing the voltage higher and higher as with resistance heaters, the diodes will simply consume more current and keep the voltage of the solar panels pulled down to around the optimum operating point. In other words, solid state diode string heating elements can be dynamic just like solar panels they are attached to. A standard resistance heating element is static and if there is more current pushed across it, its voltage will rise higher and higher. If there is less current, the voltage will simply drop outside of the optimum operating range. So there is nothing to keep a resistance heating element in the optimum voltage range for the solar panels, unless of course you use an MPPT DC converter or some kind of constant voltage regulator. A simple string of power diodes already has this regulation behavior built in and therefore makes a novel and effective heating element for direct drive solar powered heating. 
Diode strings can operate at or near the max power voltage range of a given set of solar panels throughout the day. Their effective behavior is very much like a maximum power point tracking circuit, allowing the solar panels to stay in a more optimum voltage range, thus extracting more watt hours and manifesting those watt hours as electric heat. Anyway, I wanted my solar electric space heating system to be simple and cheap while extracting maximum watt hours and heat from my solar panels. An MPPT DC converter circuit could get me more heat using an MPPT algorithm, but it's relatively expensive and complex. However, diode strings can give me the same type of voltage regulating behavior, but they are simple, cheap, easy to work on, DIY friendly, and very effective. Anyway, my resistance heaters are certainly not obsolete, far from it. In fact, what I plan to do is continue running them during the middle part of the day when there is plenty of sun, and use the diode chain heaters in parallel to regulate the voltage and efficiently extract the remaining heat. So if you connect a resistance heater to a solar panel array and there is excess power, you can also place a diode chain heater in parallel and configure it to regulate the solar panel voltage to whatever you want. If that voltage is the maximum power point of the solar panels, then the overall system taken as a whole will extract almost every bit of electrical heating power available from the solar panels in real time. The diodes will work with the resistance heater, continuously regulating the voltage when the solar conditions change. Of course, I can also just use diodes by themselves, but pushing kilowatts of heat through diodes requires bigger heat sinks and other considerations. I'm working on those projects, but it will take time. I will probably never completely abandon solar electric resistance based heaters and mostly use diodes to optimize heat production for my solar panels and existing space heaters. This is very very early in the morning. There is virtually no sun. Basically the solar panels are in the dark or in the shade. And you can see that these diodes are operating at 60.9 volts. And that is more or less analogous to the maximum power point, or VMP, of the solar panels that I'm using in this test. So basically, where do you find a nichrome heating element that acts like that? The answer is you're not going to find one. You're seeing right here a live demonstration of why a string of diodes is such a powerful heating element. In other words, unlike a piece of bare nichrome wire, this diode chain is able to regulate itself even in early morning or late evening conditions and keep the voltage of the solar panel array up around the optimum voltage range, which is also called the max power voltage. A diode chain or diode string easily outperforms a directly connected nichrome heating element, which has a static resistance and cannot regulate itself. There is no smart circuitry, there's no MPPT circuit, there's no DC conversion. In the mornings and evenings, I use the diode string to capture whatever heat is available because a nichrome heater would just pull the solar panels down to basically like a dead short. It would be only a few volts and I'd get almost no heat. The temperature and the voltage are interrelated, but it's not harmful. In this case, you're looking at one or two volts of variation. It is going to climb a little bit. And of course, uh, we're now getting 300 milliamps. We're getting slightly more solar radiation than we were before. So this is very early in the morning, and I would expect this to get stronger. Now what's going to happen is, as these diodes start to reach their operating temperature, in other words, they warm up, that voltage will come back down to about 61 volts or something like that. The 65 volts is a little higher than I'd like to work with, but if I touch that wire, I might get a buzz. Okay, the panels have just gotten some sun. It just now happened. Um, there's some trees that shade the sun, and after a while, it breaks through. As you can see, it's now gone up to 65 volts. And what's going to happen is we're now getting 1.6 amps. So that just suddenly happened. The sun came around behind a tree. And what's going to happen is these diodes are going to warm up. They're already feeling a little bit warm. And as that happens, it's going to pull that voltage down to something more reasonable. Now I've made some adjustments to the experiment here. I've actually run some cables over to a space heater that I've been modifying. And this heater is designed to run on 55 volts DC. Now I have a lot of nichrome resistance wire space heaters that I modify. They run on about 55 volts DC. This one usually stays in my shop all the time. That's a newer one right there. Right now there's not a whole lot of power and the only heater that I can run is this one right here, this little guy. I can run him on low. But first, let's look at the power settings on these diodes. So we have 1.5 amps, we have 63 volts or something like that. They're getting pretty warm, the fan is running, they're putting out heat. 
remember there's no MPPT circuit here. These diodes are regulating 63 or so volts, which is about perfect for the solar panels I have hooked up for this test. They are newer panels and they run at a higher voltage than other panels that I have. Now take note of the voltage, 63 point something volts, 1.55 amps, 1.56, something like that. Now watch what happens when I turn on the space heater on low. Remember, this is a 55 volts space heater. Take note of the voltage. Now I'm going to turn the heater on, on low, and watch what happens. The current drops to 0.5, so 500 milliamps. But the voltage stays around 60. That's because the diodes automatically backed off. The nichrome heater is now taking a little bit of that power because there's not much power available. But the diodes simply regulated and they haven't pulled the voltage down. Now granted the nichrome heater, if I turn that on early in the morning, might actually pull the voltage down. It would be pretty useless. But that's why I don't turn them on for quite some time. I wait until there's enough power to run these diodes and the heater and then I turn the nichrome heater on. Most of my heat can come from here. It can come from cheap nichrome heaters that I can service and build myself with nichrome wire only cost a few pennies. Then these diodes will act like a regulator or power optimizer and they'll do that all day for free without any sophisticated digital electronics, no DC conversion, no capacitors, no inductors, no switching electronics, nothing. Just a string of diodes on a heatsink, that's all. Now some of you have seen my power wall I have here that runs directly off of solar. This is not powered by a battery, it's just running straight off the solar. And the solar panels on the wall of my workshop, there are typically 100 watt solar panels in parallel. So I have about 500 watts of solar into this ball to work with at any time if the sun is shining. Of course right now it's a bit on the early side and there's not a lot of power available. And now what I'm doing is I'm running this other heater that I built. It's under construction like all of the things here. Everything's in the process of being prototyped. It takes time. So this is a prototype solid state semiconductor diode based heater that I'm building. And this is designed to run off the 500 watts of solar panels that are on the wall of my solar workshop. Because really a lot of times those solar panels just sit there and do nothing. Uh, they're just available for use, but a lot of times I'm not using the power and I might as well make heat. And I have an extra meter hooked up right now. I'm only getting about 14 watts of heat because it's very early. And what's nice about these diodes is I can set the power level myself. If I don't want to run at the volts max power, I can run at any voltage that I want. If I want less heat or more heat, I can just clip onto a different set of diodes like that. And you can see that it drops to about 12 watts. The voltage comes up to 16. It'll regulate 16 volts. So let's say that I want to have power for other things in the workshop. I can just adjust this. But typically I can just clip on and leave it all day. Get my heat. It will pull out a lot of watt hours out of the solar panels. And if I need to do other things with my power wall here, I can simply just disconnect the heater or set it to a lower setting and it will regulate whatever I set it to. It's important to note that these diodes can behave as a regulator, so you can also have variable power output and it will hold that power output more or less. So if I clip onto one of these other sets of diodes, the voltage will rise and it will regulate a higher voltage which means the solar panels are not as loaded. But they can do a lot of interesting things if you think outside the box. The applications for something like this are actually wide and varied. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Okay, it's later in the day now. The demonstration is continuing. So what I have right now is still running the space heater. The diodes are running. The diodes are consuming about 1.23 amps. The overall system is consuming about 3.75 amps. And the overall voltage is running at about 63.5 volts. Now just in case you're wondering what are these diodes actually doing, let's find out. What if I didn't have diodes connected and I just had the resistance heater and I didn't have anything else. Well, I'm going to show you. Remember, 63 volts is about the maximum power point range for my solar panels that I'm using for this test to power my heaters. If I disconnect the diodes, what's going to happen? Well, let's find out. Remember, the voltage is 63 volts, disconnect, 75 volts, way outside the volts max power range. And just to be clear, my heater is still running, but it's being uh, over -volted. So I need to hook the diodes back up again. So clearly the diodes are able to hold the correct voltage. They're regulating automatically without any sophisticated electronics, 63 volts. Really 61 volts would be fine, 62 volts would be fine. It's not that critical 
to match the exact voltage. It's just a range. Once I get into this range, I know I'm getting pretty much the maximum amount of heat I can get out of my solar panels. And back to the other heater I have for my Powerwall. This one is now consuming about 99 watts, but I can make it consume more if I want to. So this diode heater will sit here all day making me heat, and I can change the amount of heat that I get. It automatically regulates. It's basically a maximum power point tracking circuit for heat, but without any of the complexity the maximum power point tracking circuits always bring with them. I'm trying to save some power for other appliances because it all comes through this power wall. In fact, here's the cable powering that heater. And I have other things on here. You can see from the fuse block, I'm able to run any kind of appliances I want and plug them in these outlets in the wall here. And they're directly solar powered appliances. If you're interested in learning more about this power wall and running direct solar powered appliances from solar with no battery, no DC converter, just straight solar power, straight from the solar panels, I'll link that video down in the description. I have a really good presentation about that. Eventually, these fans will be integrated into the heater. They're powered by the diode chain itself. So right now, that fan there and that fan there are being supplied by a lower DC voltage that is tapped off of this diode chain. Of course, the regulation is not perfect, so one has to be careful, but I've been powering fans for a very long time using this method, and it works well. If you want to learn more about diode chain technology, check out my other videos on the topic where I explain it in detail. I even use solar powered diodes to cook food successfully. Development work on larger solid state solar electric heating systems is ongoing, and I hope to post further updates when possible. Please stay tuned. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments, and I'll do what I can to answer you. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.